Welcome everybody, Tommy here with Freedom 35ers, and today we're gonna to be doing a walkthrough of Clay Nation's Clay Falls pre-alpha. To get started, go ahead and log in with your credentials from claystace.io, and this will give you access to your Clay assets associated with your linked wallets. Now keep in mind, this is the pre-alpha version, uh, and this is only open to Clay holders of Clay Nation and Clay Nation Good Charlotte NFTs, and requires that you have Good Charlotte pants or Christmas pants. Now, as you can see, I've dropped in and there are actually other players live here in this server. To my surprise today, it's the first time that I've got a chance to see this uh, and it makes the world feel alive. Now, what you'll first notice when you jump in is the objectives up in the top right, which says talk to Argy. So what you'll do is you'll head over to the right here, hit E to chat, and he'll give you a new updated objective. Uh, one thing you may notice about Argy is that he is the PFP for Clay Nation over there. So kind of cool that they brought him in as his own character into this world. Now we'll see if you're having trouble platforming here or falling off and constantly getting reset back to the spawn, a good way to navigate against that is to get over to the docks. And the docks do act as checkpoints. So do your best to make your way to them to avoid having to reset over and over again. Now, as I was making my way to the objective, I noticed down in the chat that Lally McClay from the Clay Nation team had chatted and said, hey, Tommy, come back over here so we can take a picture. So I made my way back over to her, just noticed again that she was in the server, popped back over and we posed for a little pic that we posted over in the Discord right here. Really cool getting a chance to see uh, part of the team, different community members here. And another thing that you can notice down there in the bottom left is the chat log. So you can go ahead and type and uh, chat with others who are in the server with you. Now, another thing you may notice are the yellow coins and shards in different colors, the green, blue, and pink throughout the map. And you can see the count that you've collected up on the very top left. One thing to note is that when you fall or go in the water and reset, you actually lose coins. So, from what I understand and talking with the team, the objective is the main goal to go ahead and complete, uh, but it also does track how many coins and shards that you end with right now. And from what I understand, there is one pink shard that's unobtainable at the current moment. So make sure you hold on to those coins as best you can and try not to fall in the water as that will be a metric used when tracking your final score. As you can see here, the next objective is to explore the cave and find the sequence plate. You'll notice this giant rock monster right here who tries to double swipe you. As you make your way into the cave, there is this tablet. You can go ahead and hit E to pick it up. Once you do that, go ahead and make your way past this rock mushroom monster right here and head over to the waterfall. That tablet that you just picked up is also a, an important piece moving forward because it's actually a puzzle. Uh, or the key to your puzzle. And you're gonna need that as you venture into this next section. You'll notice that the map is broken up into three different sections here, with each of them getting a little bit harder uh, as far as the platforming goes. This next one is definitely by far the most challenging. So if you guys are having trouble making it for, through the first two, make sure you uh, put some practice in because this one's gonna take you a little bit probably to make it through. Now, if you're not the best on mouse and keyboard for movement, you can plug in a controller and it makes it 10 times easier. I've found, but personally, I like using the controller versus the keyboard and mouse. You can say what you want about gaming. That's just, that's what I'm comfortable with. And yes, I get made fun of all the time by the guys for not using a national mouse and keyboard. But hey, you know, that's, that's what works for me. So moving into this next section here, you're gonna go ahead and hit another checkpoint with this dock. You can choose to do uh, if you want. Others I've seen have foregone this checkpoint because they don't like getting back up from it onto the platforms. I just find it easier than having to go all the way back to that next dock. So we'll just kind of jump ahead here, but after you get that checkpoint, this is probably one of the longest sections and the objective is to get up to the upper platform. So, you may find this the most challenging, some may not. It's just really being patient while waiting to jump onto these different moving platforms. You'll notice these little starfish uh, looking things here. Make sure not to stand on them too long or they will uh, close up on you and reset you. 
So we're approaching here the upper platform and this is where that next objective will start to take place. So as you jump onto this upper platform here, you'll head over to these little dots and press the E button to place that tablet that you have. And like I said earlier, that will help you solve the puzzle. You'll see four different symbols on the tablet. And what you'll do is input those by turning the different symbols there on those four platforms. And when you put them in the correct sequence, it'll go ahead and reveal the orb that you need to go ahead and collect as part of the next objective behind the waterfall. One thing to note about that puzzle is that it is backwards. So the way that it looks when you're looking at the waterfall, flip it upside down the opposite direction and that will help you solve that. Now here I was trying to get a little cheeky, getting back down to that waterfall and jumping from a high platform to a lower one and didn't realize it at the time, but that actually kills you if you jump from too high. So your body kind of ragdolls as it does in GTA uh, when you get wasted there. So that's, that's kind of funny. Uh, so make sure you guys aren't jumping from too high of a platform. It also happens to you when you get hit by that rock monster. Same kind of animation over there. Which I think is actually pretty funny. So what you're going to do next is go back to that platform to where the waterfall is and go ahead and collect the orb for that next part of the mission. And then you get to jump on a new journey from there. As you approach this platform, you'll go ahead and complete the next part of the mission, which is collecting the orb. Once you do that, you'll see up in the top right, it says, bring the orb to Argy. So, yep, you guessed it. More platforming. That means you're going to make your way all the way back to the start. So we'll kind of speed this up again as we make our way back there. I think this is probably one of the hardest parts. As you can notice up in the top left there, I had 54 coins at this point. And by the time that I actually got back, I want to say I had maybe a handful, maybe even less than that, uh, because I think it is two coins per time that you fall down. Uh, so yeah, it takes its toll on you. So take your time on your way back, but it's definitely one of the hardest parts, uh, especially as you're trying to submit for a higher score. So make sure you're using those docks as checkpoints on your way back too, uh, so you're not having to go back and start all the way from that third section. So we're making our way back to that very first section and making sure I'm going to get that checkpoint just in case I was to go ahead and fall. I got really lucky right there with that frog. I, I used to love the clay frogs prior to this. Um, now I can't say can't say the same. Uh, they do launch you and I got lucky again right there actually going right through that ramp. Uh, but after this, you will go ahead and make your way back over to Argy and go ahead and chat. And this will actually end and complete the objective with that. It'll actually track all your stats, how many shards you've collected, how many coins you've collected and tie it all to your player account. So you can continue to keep playing and improve your score. And that ends our walkthrough. Thank you guys for watching today. This is Tommy with Freedom 35ers. See you on the next one.